Well, it's a bit of a different panel for a Tuesday, but the two people I'm going to bring in right now are more determined than anyone I know to see a real improvement in the lives of Aboriginal Australians. There's 16 targets that make up the Closing the Gap statement. It's all agreed by states and territories and the Commonwealth to be implemented, but what the targets are and the percentage terms of change we want to see are always hotly contested. Alice Springs Councillor and Indigenous Research Director at the Centre for Independent Studies, just into Price, joins me now from Alice Springs, and former Chairman of the Prime Minister's Indigenous Advisory Council, amongst many other things, Warren Mundine, is with us in Sydney. I want to start with reports today, if I can, Jacinta. These targets in the media that are said to target the number of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children in out-of-home care, we're told the recommendation will be to cut the number of children in foster care and out-of-home care by 45% by 2031. I know you've made uh, many of these issues a real feature of your time in public life. Is the issue about reducing the number of kids in care or the reason why they end up in care? Are we looking at the whole equation here, do you think? See, this is where I think the priorities are not in place. Uh, you would think that it would be about tackling the reasons why these children are in uh, out-of-home care. I mean, according to the Australian Institute of Health and Welfare, Indigenous children are more likely to be victims of child abuse, neglect and sexual assault. And we all know that these are the reasons why we have such high rates of children in out-of-home care. And you know, I've I've been an advocate for putting, placing, giving these children the opportunity to be adopted, but um, there is segregation going on where, because of uh, the colour of these children's skin, they don't get ever get that opportunity. And I have to understand, uh, you know, who who these targets are trying to appease, because to me, first and foremost. Uh, I would think that upholding the human rights of uh, children is is far more important than anything else. Warren? Oh, look, I agree 100% with what uh, Jacinda said. I, I, I was the foster parent of uh, Aboriginal kids. And when you look at these, the, the, it's, it's, they, they're sort of trying to be a bit touchy-feely about this whole thing. When you look at these targets, you've got to look at why they are. When you, I was going back through the uh, some of the reports and that today, and you see the violence against women, the, the drug and alcohol issues and stuff like that, this is where these foster kids, people I fostered, Aboriginal kids I fostered, that, that there was a whole heap of uh, violence, there was a whole heap of uh, uh, abuse, sexual abuse, there was a whole heap of, uh, you know, drug and alcohol. Uh, so these are the things that we've got to tackle. And when you tackle those areas, you're also tackling violence against women, uh, domestic violence, violence against kids, and you're also uh, violence against... against uh, uh, in a male, a male. as well. But the vast majority, when you look at the statistics, uh, it's just beyond belief. Uh, uh, you know, it's uh, 35... We always make the statement, it's 35 times more likely... Uh, an Indigenous woman would end up in a hospital from, from, from violence than, than the, uh, the rest of uh, women in Australia. But when you drill down region by region, you, you're looking at something like in Alice Springs, for, around the area of Central Australia, something like 97%, and 97 times. An Aboriginal woman is 97 times more likely to end up in hospital from violence if you live in Central Australia. And then it's uh, then it's 80, I think it's 86 times when you start looking at Darwin and places like that. So you've got this... So let's get to the real issues. This is why I think they've, 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 they've mucked it up, because when you when you set a target, it's got to be spelt out what it really is, is targeting. So even well, just, target just let me pick up that point you're talking about there and bring in Jacinta, I mean, because I spoke to you about this on, on Friday night, Warren. How can you have a target, Jacinta, about keeping... Aboriginal people out of jail, out of incarceration. There's a very clear number target there, but they look like they've dropped the target in relation to violence against Aboriginal women and girls. Again, that, that doesn't mean it, they don't want to see those numbers come down, but I'm just saying they've dropped mm. the target. Why? Well, again, it doesn't make sense. I mean, across every state and every territory, 
one third of Aboriginal people incarcerated are incarcerated for acts intended to cause injury. So you'd think these two targets would go hand in hand, that if you reduced domestic and family violence rates uh, in the home, you would see a dramatic drop in rates of incarceration. But again, where is the common sense? You know, I, I really have to understand what is going on here. Warren, you and Jacinta are in, involved in a webinar tomorrow night. Uh, tell me what that's about and how can people buy into it? How can they access it? Well, well it's, it's, it's a, a very simple access. It's, uh, the good news for us is it, it's now uh, every, it's full, but they can still uh, other people can still see it uh, on, um, on Facebook, on my Facebook page, which is www.facebook.com forward slash Nyongai, which is my uh, uh, handle, and so mm -hmm. and, and they'll be able to see the full com uh, conversation. Where this come from, and we've had a couple of these now, is that uh, the voices of Indigenous people on the ground were not being heard in the power. Uh, what you've seen now, and I'm, I'm going to be pretty blunt about this, what you're seeing now is that almost six years of coalition government moving forward in regard to Indigenous uh, advancement and that has been trashed. You also, it, it, even worse than that, I, I look at the uh, the previous Labor government, the Rudd Gillard Rudd government, they, they even had an, uh, an assistant minister for Indigenous economic and business development. That's all dropped off the radar. There's no one sitting around that table in Canberra with uh, Ken Wyatt who actually has mm -hmm. any private sector or any private uh, business acronym. And you're wondering mm -hmm. why all these things dropping. And then you look at the sensible thing about if you, and, and you said it, you said it, if you reduce crime, you reduce victims, that reduces incarceration. That's just a common sense approach. And, and that also helps in economic development because you invest in a place that has low crime, you invest in a place that has an educated, skilled uh, workforce. That's the other thing. I think that uh, the Abbott government brought in, which uh, you, know, you were very much at the forefront there working with him, was in regard to school attendance. That's now gone as well. Yeah, all the basics. Uh, this is what breaks my heart. Um, when we see these targets, I'd love to have you both back on to talk about them then in some detail. And I think tell some good... Aboriginal employment stories, because yeah. I think that really proactive stuff is missing in the debate.